little anxious brain always goes are you sure are you sure um <laughs> you sure? and i definitely still do that and i definitely like i'm not like perfect in how i feel about yeah. everything and nobody ever is like they like i said you always change yeah and life turns you all over the place how you know? would you how would you describe um your like because you were going through all these different emotions and kind of like going through all these different changes and trying to find yourself, how do you think your mental health was affected in like specifically like high school? Badly. Era? I swear yeah, like Melanie how... reads my mind. That was my next question. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I had terrible mental health. Um, mm. I probably say that from pretty young to not really all that long ago, I was just miserable i mean i've never been like diagnosed with depression or anything but i don't think you you kind of know when you've been miserable when you look past like, yeah like it's when you look I, back i don't that think you realize... i realized how miserable i was until it sort of simmered down and mm -hmm. i got to look back at it and be like because now things like i'm at uni and it's brilliant and i'm like really happy with things um with that and then it's like looking back and be like, wow, that was really bad. Aww, <laughs> like that yeah. was really awful. So like, yeah, no, I think it has like a really bad strain on your mental health. Just, I think at one point I was really living a bit of a double life in a way. Mm. Cause um, at school I had like friends and teachers and people like sort of, I'd gotten them to treat me in a certain way and pronoun, like with he pronouns and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but at home I had, I was not doing any of that. I'd like mm. just completely separated the two from each other so when I went home I felt like a very different person from like the the thing that I'd managed to build oh. up with people at school so it was really weird because it was I I don't know what it was in my mind that thought my parents would be like I think I just had heard all these stories about people getting yeah. kicked out and stuff it's and I'm like scary. now I'm like god my parents would never have done that they love me far too much yeah. <laughs> but I think when you're like young and just don't know anxiety and anxiety yeah mm. all of that you just don't you just don't really know what to do. I felt very like stuck, very like, ooh, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, I had, I think just didn't know what to do. So yeah. I just kind of split it. And I think, yeah, like, um, I think, it, I, yeah, I was pretty, pretty miserable for a, like a long time. Yeah, cause you... And I think there was a lot of different things like that was going on though. I don't think it was all to do with gender. Yeah. Like a lot of things were just like life, you know? Mm -hmm. But that was, the gender thing was always, in there at the top yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, maybe not at the top but, but like was, mixed in it was with always a, a fact a thing because i know on. you mentioned before that you went through a really big period of not speaking and having yeah. like very like a high amount of social anxiety as well mixed in with like depression yeah. and I, everything i still suffer from a huge amount of social anxiety yeah um, you're so sociable as but well i like, think yeah. i i i think i just got when i hit 20 i was like right the like that decade of my life was just terrible <laughs> um and I was like okay I'm gonna be 20 like I kind of know who I am now a bit better than I ever did before yeah and like I am fed up with being quiet so I sort of tried to hype myself up but yeah. um, oh you yeah no I, I, I totally like a flip switched when I turned 20 oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was good that was good timing <laughs> um <laughs> yeah <laughs> beautiful um <laughs> No, we I promised we wouldn't do I, it. We, I, did. we had to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you're uh, still listening. <laughs> they are. They have to. <laughs> Please don't close the tab. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think I just like, I, it didn't happen like a switch, but it, I, I think like I moved out and I was like, right, I'm going to uni. I've been wanting to go to art school for ages. I got into a course I really wanted to do. Like I'm now surrounded by lots of people who are like like-minded and I just thought like if now is not the time to try be myself then there's really no other time and I and I was just like looking back I was like I'm not gonna spend the next fucking decade until I'm 30 like yeah. I'm not gonna have if like I have to go do another decade like that then I just I don't know like well, so I was, yeah. I just made a kind of decision in a way when I went to uni that I was just going to like try and be happy. <laughs> and I think that, that actually would have been so good for your brain. So Melanie and I have read, well, I'm reading and Melanie's already read the book Ikigai. And yeah. basically in that book, they talk about how if you take yourself outside of your comfort zone, it literally like 
helps your brain develop yeah mm. and yeah so it, doing whatever yeah. you're yeah. doing would I, have been so helpful for i think your, i think that's yeah. why i'm a happy person because i just sort of was like took a bit of a jump um not really consciously it just sort of kind of happened yeah. um, no, you were ready but but i there's lots of still things that i wish that i could get better with and get through but like um i think yeah like when I, I mean, I was really shy as a child. Oh, like, like I've always been really quiet. Like, yeah. I was a quiet kid. I only ever... I mean, I had friends and stuff, but, like, I would draw a lot. I never stopped drawing as soon as I could no, hold a pen. Oh, you did amazing. it. Amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, Sam is an artist. And, yes. like, honestly, check yeah. them out because your work is unreal. I'm Thank obsessed you. with you. Yeah. <laughs> I try very hard. Yeah. Um, but, no, it's kind of my life. Like, it's always what I've done... It's always been my way getting through a lot of things, yeah. and um, probably like most people who they, they just use. It's a great thing to use as like mm. anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I I was really quiet for big periods of time. Like I think it was my way of dealing with anything bad. I would just like you know like fight or flight. I like flight it all the way. Yeah. Um, I I get you. Um, I'm the same. I literally just like. Shut down you and shut fucking down. sprint. Yeah, I yeah. just had a conversation yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. Like, we all deal with stress and anxiety and, and bad things differently. Mm. And my way was just to like shut down and go inside. Mm, um, yeah. So I think that's also a reason why I maybe didn't talk to my parents or talk to people about things because I was just so not ready to Unknown, deal with anything. Yeah. And I think that that's a really natural way to act. Actually, I used to think that was really w weird, but it just makes it, it makes sense. Yeah. Like if you're just so not ready to deal with shit, then you're gonna you're just, just be ready. like yeah. on a total standby mode the whole time mm. um and there was a period in high school where um apparently i didn't know this but apparently like half of my year thought that i couldn't speak oh um, oh my god that gave me chills uh <laughs> because i and i it wasn't i couldn't i would speak it wasn't like i was properly you know you have people yeah. who have proper problems with not being able to speak at all it's just i wouldn't speak to many people <laughs> i had like a few people and mm. i speak to teachers and that but i think i was just so quiet and i like developed the skill of being like a ghost i was Aww. so good at but the thing is my my perception of it was like the more i'm invisible the less like bother and the, 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 the less bother i'll get into the less drama the less questions even like, bullying and uh, stuff like, yeah, yeah if i get noticed less i will have less issues and i did get bullied less and i did have less issues but then i was ex probably extremely lonely and extremely i was yeah. isolating myself so much so it's not a way i recommend people deal with no. their problems Thank I actually you. sometimes yeah. wish so badly that I had been that angry, pissed off teenager who's yeah. always causing problems because that just like at least you're like showing how you're activist like yeah. and then people notice that there's an issue when you're all loud and scared. But then you have but, to constantly fight. Yeah. Like it's yeah, kind of like being exhausting. in fight mode. All I don't the think time. either things are good really, but in a way I just sometimes think like was I so quiet that everyone just re didn't see that there was an issue? Yeah, you but were I just think, saving your energy yeah, for and now. I, I also yeah. did, I did love in like oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for up. now. Now you <laughs> now, can now I can't educate be stopped. And stuff. Yeah. Um uh now I'm hard to shut up. <laughs> um no, and I like I think I do actually now I really do. Um get a lot of like manic energy from like instead I think back then my social anxiety was like be quiet blend into the wall mm. but I think now my social anxiety is like if I'm if I'm uh dealing with things and social anxiety I think my thing to do is to be build up all that energy and it becomes kind of manic and my dad has it I think I got it from him because yeah your dad's um, so cool he, he's he he has periods of like so much energy and he's just da -da 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 -da. and then I and then he goes quiet and I'm like that as well um but I'd much rather be a bit chaotic and a bit manic and excitable <laughs> and talkative and I think I'd much rather people tell me to shut up now because I'm talking too much than be what I was when I was yeah. younger because that's like that's like that sucked you know um so now I'm just kind of like oh, screw it I'm gonna annoy people let's do it <laughs> no you've saved up all your words for now saved and it's up, like yeah. it, you have a right to have a voice and you have a right to voice your opinion and educate people on a subject that maybe again that's not in their circle of friends like one of the biggest thing that I learned about like trying to educate yourself on different subjects of like equality and all this is just make new friends if you don't know yeah. about something 
get out of your comfort zone and make a friend who is in that circle of that subject or something like that. Even like, yeah. So it's like, I didn't understand this issue. And as much as I do now be until meeting you. you. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I'm so grateful that you're here and so Thank open. <laughs> yeah. Grateful that you're here to just educate me, myself, Maggie, all your friends and everything. Because like, if I, if you didn't do that, I would have no outlet or kind of personal source to tap into yeah. to yeah. understand. I, I think that, yeah. yeah, I think I really don't mind talking to people about it and, to, and educating people about it. But I think that there is trans people who are just fed up having yeah. to even talk. And yeah, I get at, it. At times I do feel a little like, God, it's like so annoying <laughs> that yeah. people just don't know. But then I, I think that I just tap into reality and I'm like, well, that's not how it is. So at least we're, um, they're not ignoring it. Like, do no, you know what exactly. I mean? 